The ground proximity warning system for the 757 and 767 provides visual and voice warning and advisory messages. These messages alert the flight crew to unsafe conditions due to terrain proximity. This program presents the ground proximity warning and alerting modes. Mode 1 is excessive sink rate. Mode 2 is excessive closure rate with respect to rising terrain. Mode 3 is altitude loss during ascent. Mode 4 is unsafe or insufficient terrain clearance when not in a landing configuration. Mode 5 is excessive glide slope deviation. Envelope modulation modifies specific mode envelopes to prevent nuisance messages at some airports that have unusual terrain features. Mode 6 has two submodes, decision height alerting and altitude callout, which enunciates specified radio altitudes before touchdown. Both are airline options. Mode 7, the wind shear mode, takes priority over all other ground proximity modes. It alerts the flight crew of dangerous downdraft or updraft conditions. An unsafe flight condition is determined by the ground proximity warning computer. This computer is in the main equipment center on the E2 rack on the 757 and on the E1 rack on the 767. The ground proximity warning computer calculates the warning and advisory mode conditions with incoming signals from interfacing systems. Signals are received from the left air data computer, the left radio altimeter, the left instrument landing system receiver, the left inertial reference unit, the left flight management computer, and both stall warning computers. Other signals received are the landing gear lever position and flap positions. The ground proximity warning computer sends discretes that turn on indicator lights and voice messages. The left air data computer supplies computed air speed, barometric altitude, and barometric altitude rate. It is on the E2 rack on the 757 and on the E1 rack on the 767. The left radio altimeter supplies radio altitude. It is on the E5 rack for both the 757 and the 767. The left ILS receiver supplies localizer deviation, glide slope deviation, and selected runway heading. It is on the E2 rack on the 757 and on the E1 rack for the 767. The left flight management computer is the main source of latitude, longitude, and magnetic track data. It is on the E2 rack for both the 757 and the 767. The left inertial reference unit sends inertial velocity. This unit is also an alternate source of latitude, longitude, and magnetic track data. It is on the E2 rack on the 757 and on the E1 rack on the 767. The left and right stall warning computers provide angle of attack and flap position. They are in the warning electronics unit on the P51 panel on both the 757 and 767. Data on landing flap position and landing gear lever position enables or inhibits some ground proximity modes. Push the flap and gear override switches on the first officer's P3-1 instrument panel to simulate flap down position and landing gear lever down position. Voice messages and indicator lights are two types of flight compartment enunciations. Voice messages are heard through the oral warning loudspeakers. The ground proximity warning light, also called the pull-up light, the wind shear light, and the captain's and first officer's master warning lights come on red as warning indicators. The amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch is an alerting indicator. 
The following sequences present in more detail the ground proximity modes and their enunciations as they occur on the ground proximity warning system indicators. Mode 1 alerts the flight crew to the presence of a sink rate that is too fast. The initial voice message transmits over the flight deck oral warning speakers. Sink rate. Sink rate. And the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. If the condition is not quickly corrected, the ground proximity computer sounds the voice message. The message continues until the sync rate has decreased enough. The red pull-up light and the captain's and first officer's master warning lights come on. Mode 2 alerts the flight crew to a closure rate that is too fast in an area of rising terrain. This mode is subdivided into two sub-modes, 2A and 2B. Sub-mode 2A applies to flight with the flaps retracted. Sub-mode 2B applies to landing approach with the flaps extended. In sub-mode 2A, with the flaps up, the ground proximity warning computer determines the terrain closure rate. If this closure rate is more than a given value, sub-mode 2A enunciations start. The initial voice message is... Terrain. Terrain. And the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. If the condition continues 1.6 seconds after the start of the condition, the voice message changes to... And the red pull-up light and both master warning lights come on. When the airplane no longer closes toward the ground at an excessive rate, the sub-mode 2A warning condition ends. The voice message changes to a repeated... Terrain. And the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. All enunciations stop when the airplane gains 300 feet in altitude from the point where the closure condition ended, or the landing gear is extended. Submode 2B applies when the flaps are down during landing approach. There are two different enunciations. One when the landing gear is extended, the other when the landing gear is retracted. When the landing gear is extended, the enunciations are the repeated voice message, Terrain. Terrain. and the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. When the landing gear is retracted, the enunciations are the voice message, and the red pull-up light and the master warning lights come on. Mode 3 indications occur when either flaps or gear are retracted and the airplane loses altitude after takeoff or during a missed approach. Mode 3 has two different voice messages. Don't sink. Don't sink. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Terrain. The voice message. Don't sink. Don't sink. Sounds when the altitude loss is more than a specified threshold value and the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. If the altitude loss occurs during a climb out against a mountain, the repeated voice message, Too low, terrain. Too low, terrain. Starts when the radio altitude drops below a minimum threshold level. And the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. Mode 4 alerts the flight crew to insufficient terrain clearance when the airplane is not in a landing configuration. Mode 4 has two sub-modes, 4A and 4B. Sub-mode 4A applies when the landing gear is retracted. Sub-mode 4B applies when the landing gear is extended, but the flaps are not extended. In sub-mode 4A, with the gear up and at low airspeed, the indications are the voice message, too low, gear, too low, gear, and the ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. These indications continue until the submode 4A condition is corrected. At high airspeed, 
Submode 4A enunciations are the repeated message. Too low. Terrain. Too low. Terrain. And the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. Submode 4B alerts the flight crew to insufficient terrain clearance with gear down and the flaps up. At low air speed, the enunciations are the voice message. Too low. Flap. Too low. Flap. And the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. These indications continue until the submode 4B condition is corrected. At high air speeds, the mode 4B enunciations are the repeated too low terrain, too low terrain, and the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. Mode 5 enunciations tell the flag crew of descent below the glide slope during approach with the gear down. The Mode 5 voice message, glide slope, has two sound levels. Low, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, and normal. Glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope. Each message depends on the amount of deviation from the glide slope and radio altitude. As long as there is too much glide slope deviation, these voice messages continue. The message repetition rate increases as the radio altitude decreases and as the glide slope deviation increases. Glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope, glide slope. Also, the amber ground proximity glide slope inhibit light switch comes on. Push this light switch to cancel mode 5 enunciations. Envelope modulation prevents nuisance indications during takeoff or approach in some locations with unusual terrain conditions. This example shows an airplane overflying a mountain while on approach to an airport. At the moment of overflying the mountain, the radio altitude is low and may put the airplane in a ground proximity mode envelope. This causes the respective indications to start. Terrain. Terrain. Mode envelope modulation modifies the mode envelope so the airplane stays outside of the mode envelope. This prevents nuisance messages. In mode 6, when the airplane descends through the selected decision height setting with the landing gear down, this voice message sounds. Minimum. Minimum. This is a voice only mode and an airline option. The altitude call out mode provides the voice messages. 100. 50. 30. Radio altitudes when the airplane descends through them. This is a voice only mode and is an airline option. Mode 7, the wind shear mode, applies when the airplane is in wind shear conditions during takeoff or landing. The wind shear mode overrides all other ground proximity modes. A wind shear warning occurs during some given downdraft or tailwind conditions. The indications are the red wind shear light comes on, the master warning lights come on, and on the EADI, the red wind shear message shows. And the voice message is... Wind shear! Wind shear! Wind shear! An optional siren tone can be heard before the voice warning. Another option for the wind shear mode is a yellow alert message on the EADI. This alert is the only enunciation. It occurs for specified updraft and headwind conditions that come before wind shear warning conditions. In summary, the ground proximity warning system detects and enunciates ground proximity modes. Mode 1 is excessive sink rate. Mode 2, excessive closure rate. 3, altitude lost during ascent. 4, insufficient terrain clearance, five, excessive glide slope deviation, six, 
decision height alerting, and the altitude callout mode. Both modes are airline options. And mode 7, wind shear, which overrides all other modes. This program also included mode envelope modulation to prevent nuisance messages for airports with unusual terrain features. Unsafe conditions due to terrain proximity are determined by the ground proximity warning computer. The computer calculates mode conditions with incoming signals from interfacing systems such as the left air data computer, the left radio altimeter, the left ILS receiver, the left inertial reference unit, the left flight management computer, the left and right stall warning computers, and the landing gear lever position and flap position sensors. This completes the ground proximity warning system overview for the 757 and the 767. This program covered the visual and voice messages that alert the flight crew to unsafe conditions due to terrain proximity.